Hello guys, I hope you are staying safe. My name is Wale Farrell. I'm a tech entrepreneur and you are watching another episode of Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On Tech Roundup this week, we're doing things a little bit differently, as you can tell. We'll be showcasing a portion of our most recent FinTech Roundtable with some of the leading professionals in the Nigerian space. In this episode, we'll focus on the e-commerce space in a panel discussion that is led by the CEO of Konga, Namdi AK. All the exclusive insights into the operations of Konga since the acquisition by Udala. The state of the industry in this new world post COVID-19 and their aspirations for the future. Do you know that Konga is set to break even? I know you might be interested in that. Enjoy the episode and as always, keep watching. Uh, Namdi, I was reading recently uh, when I saw that uh, a major financial backer of your main competitor uh, is pulling out of that business. It came as a as a shock. I couldn't understand what they were, what what that meant. Uh, and I was hoping I would get your perspective on that because that's a competitor that has been putting a lot of cash, frankly speaking, into that business. Uh, went IPO last year to raise uh, allegedly to raise more money for the business. Uh, but now they are saying uh, we are no longer going to be in this business. How are you reacting to that? And what does that mean? for e-commerce in Nigeria and probably in the rest of Africa? I mean, it's a tough one. I'm, I'm not sure how to react, really, because um, you're right. They, they were the first backer for, for our competition. Um, but at the end of the day, they are, they, they are still a VC. So so they, they have they have set goals, they have set targets, they have um, 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 profit targets that, that, that they're trying to meet. So at the end of the day, if they have a venture like Jumia, that went from um, 20 something uh, dollar shares for something and dropped down to two point. I believe it's two point eight eight dollars now. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's it's a tough it's a tough investment, and it gets to the point where you need to take a decision, take a business decision, and, and I think that's what they really did. What does it mean for the for 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 the e-commerce industry in Nigeria? Is what, what's really important to me. Uh, I think uh, we've been giving almost this bad, this um, negative. Frame is the same way people look at Nigerians as first as it has found, found, it's found its way to to hit our e-commerce industry, um, which for me is very negative. Because um, do I think they are fraudulent? A fraudulent company? Maybe not. Did they do a lot of things wrong? Probably yes. Um, but um, should that light shine on everybody else in the industry? I don't think so. Um, a, a lot of us are, are, are been grinding. Not, maybe not making as much noise, but I've been really trying to make this e-commerce thing work. And I always tell people, it's, it's not just about selling products online. If I wanted to make, uh, if I wanted to make billions overnight from selling products, I would just go and buy half of Kunta Village with the money I've spent on Konga so far. You understand? So, so it's not really about selling products. It's really about just trying to change the way people buy products. So um, at some point as an investor, you have to sit down and say, okay, do I really want, really want to go, go ahead with this investment? Um, yeah. Especially with all the bad press the business is getting, all, all the issues they are facing, shutting down in, in, in different markets. So, I mean, they are very smart people in the business, but um, at some point, you really have to sit down and take a business decision. Um, there's, there's been this debate about which model of e-commerce will truly work in an emerging market like this. Uh, is it where, you know, like Conga, I think Conga started as a um, mega merchant online where they had all the inventories and, and all that and then uh gradually went into uh having third party merchandise you know uh being mm. sold on the platform uh, i don't know what your mix is today uh, with you know your mm. own inventory versus third party inventory or whether you have one versus the other what's your what's your school of thought in terms of which is really more appropriate for a market like nigeria if, if I had to pick myself personally, I would say that the first party, first party, that's, that's only your inventory, only your own inventory is, is critical for success in the Nigerian market. And the reason I would say that is um, there's a lot of trust issue in Nigeria. So when you have a market that there's already lack of trust and you try to rely on third parties, you end up shooting yourself in the foot. Mm -hmm. But um, unfortunately, with the kind of market we're in, it's almost impossible to own everything you sell. You need them um, huge amounts. Almost all the money you're raising is basically going into working capital, which is not sustainable. So, 
what we had to do at some point, which was I think was a really was it was a really visionary decision by Simshagaya at that point in time, was to launch a marketplace. And Conga was really the first marketplace in in Nigeria at that point in time. And um, they were able to very quickly scale to about 100,000 merchants selling different products. Now it's really great because what now happens is that you have 500,000, 1 million products on your platform. But then you start having those issues where the customer orders the products, they don't get exactly what they what they, what they ordered for. You start having issues with quality and all these kind of uh, different problems. But at the end of the day, your business, you're there to solve problems. So you find your ways to solve those problems. But in terms of what is ideal, I always feel it's ideal to, to run that first party mode. And I, and I believe that's why Amazon was able to build so much trust in, in the early days, because they, they had so much control over the inventory in their, in their system. Yeah, so for Conga today, the split is still majority uh, marketplace. Because of our retail stores and our omni-channel model, we've been able to, um, um, it was actually before before the acquisition, it was about 90, 95%, 5%. But now we brought it to about 80, 20. So, so we control a lot more percentage of the inventory we sell. I noticed that you guys have your own delivery uh, apparatus. You have K Express. Uh, two questions there. One, what informed you to make that decision to own your own delivery outfit to solve to to, to deliver product to to uh, customers? And two, do you think by doing that and you are solving that logistic problem, you know, around e-commerce? So I think the choice was really, at that point in time, it was taking a decision on whether to go ahead with third parties, third party logistics partners, or to do, do the logistics um, and delivery yourself. The problem at that point in time was that nobody could really handle last month delivery in Nigeria. Let's call it speed. At, speed at. As, as of 2014, 2015, nobody was doing last month delivery nationwide at the scale that e-commerce companies are doing it today. So, so really, I think all the e-commerce players in the market really set a standard for a lot of 3PLs. Up until 2016, DHL didn't have an e-commerce department in Nigeria. Same thing for UPS. So it was really later on these guys started to catch on to catch on to um, 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 last mile deliveries. I started to take it a lot more seriously. Um, but at that point in time, because of the kind of volume that that, that we're turning out. Um, it didn't make sense relying on third parties. So at that point in time, we started building our own network of, and we don't own all the assets 100%. We also work with what we call franchisees in different locations that, that help us deliver products in the last month. So, so um, at the end of the day, um, we thought it was critical in order to keep that customer experience um, optimal for us to um, develop our own logistics network. Or less, I got to, we've gotten to the point where people are urging and we can't deliver to them. Do you think in your own estimation, and I said it's an unfair question, is Conga better now under the new management than uh, Conga or? So for me, I don't think we're, we just have a different approach um, based based on our on our background, and, and this is coming from a family business perspective, from designer school. Um, we're very conservative people, so when we took hold of that big business with huge funding, we had to kind of scale it down. So the first thing we did was we, we dropped costs, costs reduced by almost 60%. And the funny thing is in the first year, we were able to grow, grow, um, grow our revenue by almost eight times, even while dropping costs by 60%. And I think the, the, the key reason for that is, first of all, the omni-channel model we were able to deploy. And then the kind of synergy we had coming from Udala, who was very strong um, offline um, and had very strong first party business, to Conga, who had a very strong marketplace and a merchant network. And then connecting those two really gave us a lot of strength. And I think that's why we're still, we're still um, alive and still pushing today. And honestly, um, we've come so close to profitability. If not for this, um, um, this unexpected pandemic, uh, I think we would have been very close to breaking even by the end of this year. So it's quite unfortunate. That's, 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 that's good news to hear that an e-commerce business in Nigeria is fine. At this scale, it's flat finally going to be profitable. Let's take COVID-19 away. Uh, hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll figure out a way to, to solve that problem after all. Thank you, Namde. As always, we'd like to hear your comments and feedback. So please connect with me on LinkedIn at Wale Farron and subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel if you haven't done so. Also, please like us on Facebook and be part of our vibrant tech community and our interactions. Have a great weekend, guys. And see you all again next week. Good night.